name is Steve Beebe. I'm a bean breeder and bean team leader for SEAT in Cali, Colombia. We're responsible for bean research in both Latin America and Africa in support of national programs in both continents. Beans are an important crop, the most important grain legume in Latin America and the most important grain legume in, in eastern southern Africa. Uh, our program in both continents seek, seeks to address both biotic and abiotic stresses. Uh, drought has been an issue for us for really since the inception of the bean program in the 1970s. Uh, my own involvement with, with drought and in fact with molecular analysis for QTLs actually predated the Tropical Legumes One project. Uh, we started working on, on drought populations for QTLs uh, as, long as, uh, as long as 10 or 12 years ago. But I really only uh, became fully engaged with, with the Tropical Legumes One project about two years ago. We've been doing our phenotyping in Colombia, largely, but the Tropical Legumes One project also permitted us to extend our phenotyping into Africa and in close collaboration with, with Tropical Legumes Two. Uh, we have the same five programs in Africa working with us in Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. And under these two projects, we sought to establish a regional uh, cooperation on drought research uh, amongst these amongst these five programs, establishing phenotypic phenotyping sites uh, in several of the in several of the countries, training uh, technicians and and professionals researchers in in drought research. We always felt that it's very important to train technicians because often those are the the workhorses who are, who are out in the field and who are actually getting the results that, that carry research forward. So, uh, especially in Tropical Legumes too, we had a heavy emphasis on training of, uh, of technicians. So, the fact of having the same five programs in both, in both projects facilitated uh, the interaction between them and the moving of results from, from TL1 into TL2. Uh, especially up to now, that interaction has been affected through, uh, through students. We have had uh, a couple students who were financed through TL2 with topics under TL1. I thought that was a very effective cooperation, collaboration, uh, which I think will assure the, the effective use of, of TL1 outputs in the future. Uh, we through that cooperation, through the phenotyping, which has been again carried out under both projects, as I would say refined perhaps under TL1, we've identified germplasm in TL2. Uh, it's being those techniques, those methods are being applied in Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, uh, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. Um, and we find that uh, our, research, our research partners have been extremely excited about, uh, about addressing issues of drought, which in many parts of Eastern Africa, Southern Africa, is a critically limiting uh, factor for, for production on farm. I would say that's the most important part, but uh, training, say training in what? I say training especially in phenotyping. And again, uh, phenotyping has been uh, a bridge between TL1 and TL2. So, uh, very happy with, uh, with the results on that. I think we have some very solid scientific outputs, uh, which uh, hopefully would be relevant for, for other legumes, perhaps even other crops as well. Well, I think intermediate impacts, which are really coming on board right now, uh, include the marker-assisted selection. Well, first for biotic stresses, uh, common bacterial blight, uh, storage insects, 
uh, viral, viral resistance genes. We're moving into larger scales uh, marker system selection this year, in fact. So in, ter in research terms, the impact will be expanding this year. Uh, obviously, the real impact, the, real, the impact that really matters is in farmer fields. And that's when we get uh, new varieties on farm uh, with farmers and really proven to, to address you know, the limitations of production that farm families face.